So we've got our job workflow set up, we got our board set up, now it's time to start entering our jobs. The first thing we actually have to do is we have to enter a new contact. So we're gonna click the plus up here at the top and we're gonna choose add contact. This will be John Doe the second. And on the contact, it's important that we keep information like an email address and a phone number because these things actually are not kept inside the job. Think of the contact here like your client who's actually paying the bill. So you'll want their billing address, their email, their phone number, the things that you need for the person who foots the bill for your projects. Once we've finished this out, and we don't have to worry about a lot of this, we can save it. And then we need to make a job. It's important that we do no work under the contact. As soon as we've made the contact, the very next thing we should be doing is making the job. So we're gonna click on jobs right here, and we're gonna click on add jobs to the right. Here we can choose the job name. So I'm going to say that this is John Doe, apartment, Glenwood. I'm gonna put in the address of where the actual job is going to take place. I'm going to choose which job workflow I'm going to use, the starting status, the sales rep. Now, this can be anyone on my account, but it will default to whoever's creating it in the first place. A lead source, if I'm choosing to track lead source, who it's assigned to. Now, this can be different than the sales rep. The sales rep, as the name would suggest, is the person in your sales team who's working with this customer who's probably going to get a commission on it. Anyone who it's assigned to could be people like a production manager, a crew chief, or a billing specialist who's going to also be working with this customer and needs to see their information. The next field down is related contact. You see how John Doe 2 is listed there as a primary contact? That tells us he's the guy that we're gonna bill. We can't add some more information here because honestly, every company requires different information to function. So let's cancel out of this and let's go get some new fields that we can use when we're making our jobs. Now to do that, we're gonna click on the circle in the upper right and we're gonna choose settings. Then we're going to go to job fields on the left-hand side. And we're gonna click add job fields. Now there's only three things that you'll choose when you're adding a custom field. You'll choose the name. Again, this can be anything, but I suggest you make it descriptive. I'm actually an insurance company, so I'm going to need an insurance claim number. Then I have multiple types that I can choose. A date, as the name would suggest, allows me to choose a date from a calendar. A decimal, allows me to put in a number, which I can even have displayed as currency. A number alone is a number without a decimal point. A text allows me to enter anything. A Boolean is a simple yes, no check mark. And an options list is pretty darn cool. An options list allows me to add things to a drop-down menu, like the one you just saw while I was going through type. So I could put in something like Monday, Tuesday, and so forth. And they would appear in their own separate dropdown. Finally, I can choose if something is going to be required. That means that it has to be filled out before I can save the job originally. So while you might think, I definitely want to have an insurance claim number as a required field, if your team's not going to have the insurance claim number the first time they enter the job, we're not going to make that required. So for an insurance claim number field, I'm going to choose text because it's often alphanumeric. I'll make sure that the field name makes sense and then I'm gonna save it. Whenever I make a change in Job Nimbus, it is my suggestion that we reload the page. This makes sure that next time we do something, we'll already see it in place. Otherwise it can take a few minutes. Now we're going to add a job. We could go back to the contact and add it there, which is what I generally suggest you do. But we could also click on this blue plus button and click add job here on the top. The reason why I suggest that we do it from the contact is that the related contact field here is already filled out. Here, we have to type it in. There's John Doe the second. 
and you see he's now marked as the primary contact. If we don't fill out that field, we won't know who that job is connected to until someone comes back and edits it. That means you won't be able to email them, you won't be able to call them, because those are tied to the contact, not to the job itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill out this job off camera, since you've already seen me do it once, and then we're gonna talk about navigating through your job and the different fields inside it.